Are we on the verge of a full-blown banking crisis and how will the markets react to any further frailties exposed within the lending sector? Chris Bailey joins us now from Financial Orbit with an answer to that question and many others. Chris, good to talk to you. Thanks indeed for joining us. Um, first of all, the situation is at the moment would have seemed to be after having seen the loss of uh, Signature Bank, the problems at SVB, uh, Republic, there's a number of banks that are coming into this business about support and credit suisse, of course, is one of the biggest ones of them. Um, are we entering a full-blown banking crisis, do you think? I don't think so. However, the game is clearly changing and evolving. We've had 10, 12 years where we've seen very few elements of overt banking crises. They've actually happened, but not in any overt fashion. We're now moving to a time when there are some banks which are failing or struggling in a, in a very overt way. However, governments are well aware, and central banks, that banks cannot allow, be allowed to fail. Because if they do, there's a bigger fundamental issue which occurs. Too big to fail. Too big to fail. Yeah. But that's true for anything. If you think about the way a bank has a fundamental role in the way we live our own lives, if suddenly we can't spend our money or um, anything else, companies can't work and related, they have to be allowed to continue. However, as shown best probably by Credit Suisse, central banks and governments will find a solution which will ensure that the bank continues, but it effectively does go out of business or bailed into another company. Reality is regulation is going up for the whole banking sector. And as regulation goes up, something changed for banking investment. It doesn't become as exciting. And that's particularly true in the developed market zones because we've already got an aging population that probably uses a bank a bit less or doesn't save as much money into a bank. So it becomes duller at another level. But from a, in terms of that, that um, way it is, is supported underneath um, the business, regulation is just going to go up and up, meaning from an investing perspective, banks become duller. They continue, but they're dull. So that hope that we had in previous decades of an exciting, growing banking sector, that's for the emerging market zones. It's not for developed market banks. And of course, part of that developed market banking structure that's put in place, you say the over, not over-regulation, that's the wrong word. The, the regulation, which I think a company, it's, it's a good thing, obviously. Uh, stress tests. Mm. We've, we've been seen every single quarter for about two or three years, we saw stress tests being reported and we don't see so much of it now. But my guess is, is that banks are in a far better shape than they were pre great financial crisis back 10, 12 years ago. Mm. Um, so I guess that we should expect them to survive this Absolutely. Um, increase in interest Indeed, rates. Indeed, because what they've learned is that investment banking has its own risks. However, day-to-day -day retail banking, um, matters associated with managing your pension fund or yep. something like that, stuff which we all need inside a bank will continue in a perfectly good fashion, but it's highly regulated. So highly regulated, safe, but a bit dull, but that's probably a good thing. The excitable investment banking zone will also have a lot more um, analysis over it and challenges to it. But I think companies such as Credit Suisse and maybe over time companies even like Barclays will realise that is an area that doesn't really work for us medium term, we shall see. By contrast, if I look at emerging markets as they continue to evolve as businesses, I'm talking here about the Indias, Chinas, various other emerging markets in the world, they will continue to have a broad range of excitable banking opportunities, both some bad things and many good things too, akin to what we saw in the UK or the US markets in the 80s, 90s and early part of this century. So banking investors have opportunities. You can have a very dull investment, which is a bit like a, a bond plus profile, which is fine, but you can have something excitable in the emerging markets, which has risk with it. That's your choice. As always, as an investor, you've got to do analysis and appraisal. That's all, all, always critical. But should you expect volatility in the financial sector? Yes, particularly in the emerging market zone. Dull um, central UK banks will continue to exist. That's the good news. Just don't believe they're going to be the key part of the FTSE 100 to invest into. Uh, like me, you've been around a while in this business, and I know you've had some fairly high-profile uh, roles within banking. And of course, you lived through the dot-com crisis and traded through that and invested through that great financial crisis. Um, you now manage personal money. Uh, you're an IG client as well. Uh, what is your approach to where we are in the markets? The approach is actually back to how actually my career started, really, which was Hard work. That is the key way, key thing to do in markets. We were, when in hindsight, we were all spoiled in the 2010s. Markets were wonderful. Everything was awesome, seemingly, almost yeah, everything. Yeah. Things have now become trickier. 
but not impossible. So you've actually got to go back to some of those old matters that you and I learn in our relative youth or in, in other times in the 80s, 90s and the early part of this century, which is hard work appraisal, understanding what you're investing in and why. So I think it's becoming a much more active investing world. It's not one where passive investment is as easy. It can be cheap, but maybe it's cheap for a reason. And so consequently, you've got to be a thoughtful investor who realizes the risk that they're taking. And consequently, investing is never going to be an easy, oh my goodness, I'm going to make money every month. I wish it was like that, but it isn't. We all know that um, if you are going to be an investor, you've got to accept that sometimes you will be wrong. And you've got to accept that and move on and learn from it. Mm. And certainly over my career, I've made plenty of mistakes. Yeah. But any investor who have any worth will admit that immediately. Because making a few mistakes is the way that you learn. And keeping on learning is the key for the investment world. So it doesn't matter whether you're old guys like me or youngsters, you can always get better. And that's the exciting thing about the investment world. That's what makes me real feel excited about the rest of the 2020s and into the 2030s. It's still an exciting and evolving world out there. And there's still stuff to do in the investment markets. It's certainly a lot better than sticking money in the bank or under the bed or something. You know, there are still many more things to be doing than that. Wise words. Uh, Chris, it's been a pleasure. Thanks indeed uh, for joining us. It's Chris Bailey from Financial Orbit uh, with a look at where we are in the markets at the moment and the opportunities that nonetheless, despite the fact we are possibly on the verge of some sort of a banking collapse, if that's going to happen, uh, that's one way of looking at the markets as things stand at the moment.